Morning guys! Um, I'm trying to do a video without the children, but it seems they don't want to do it without me. They don't want to sit and watch Gruffalo's Child, which is currently on the TV. Say hello. Hello. Say hello to Harry. <laughs> Say good morning. Good morning. Say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Well done. Okay, so we are going to just have a little chat this morning about my like five top tips for a successful Christmas day and one that hopefully you can kind of enjoy. <laughs> so I know everybody's kind of dreading Christmas day. Well, not everybody, but clients and customers like really dread Christmas day because they know they're going to kind of fall off the wagon, do things that are um, like going to obviously affect their weight or how they feel. But you kind of should just give yourself some simple rules and then just enjoy the day. Um, so basically I've got my five top tips for Christmas day and then once I've told you the five top tips for Christmas day we are then gonna oh, oh, I'm gonna tell that, you why I'm so excited under the, tree. under the tree yeah do you want to put it under the tree for me yeah. so Harry's gonna go and put it under the tree but I'm gonna tell you why I'm so excited about that present that's going under my tree um, so basically Christmas day so we all know that like the Christmas period is a bit of a nightmare um, for anybody who's already struggling with their weight or you know tries to maintain a certain weight or anybody who's just quite health conscious um, and you don't want to be the boring person who's saying no to things yes the gruffalo is not in my chair the gruffalo child is look up. go and have a look no it's finished no i think it's gone go and have a little look and see what's on next quick um so basically it's quite nice just to have some simple rules for Christmas Day because after all, like, it's Christmas. It's all about being with your family, um, enjoying the things that you have, thinking about the things, you know, that pe other people don't have. So, a um, few simple rules. Molly wants to play with the Hoover. Right, just don't press the button, okay? She's going to press the button. This is her new favourite thing. Um, so, my top tips for Christmas, okay? So, first one is breakfast. So... Big rule of mine, if you start on the right foot, Mommy. yes, quick go and have another look, come back in a minute, <laughs> come and sit up here and talk to everybody with me. Um, so breakfast, if you start the day on the right foot, things are going to go a lot better than if you get up and have, you know, some chocolate or something like that. So try some dim damage limitation for the day. Like you don't have to go crazy. Like you can just do it. So your Christmas lunch, your pudding, your cheese board and stuff is like super enjoyed. Cause otherwise you kind of just are chucking stuff in and then the next day you're just like, oh my God, I feel awful. So what you don't want is that to happen. So breakfast, you've just got to make sure it's high protein. So if everybody's having like bacon and eggs, something like that, have some bacon and eggs. Obviously if you're vegetarian, vegan, um, there's other options that you can be looking at. You just have a handful of nuts. Like, just make sure, like, your first meal of the day is um, high protein. That's what you have to make sure. Because that will feed your body on nutrition. And that's what your body's calling for in the morning. Your body is calling for um, protein first thing. So give it the protein that it wants. And then you can kind of think, right, I'm just going to keep keep focus now till lunchtime. And then I can really enjoy my lunch. So... Rule two, dinner. You have to eat your meat and your veg first before you tuck into roast potatoes, Yorkshire puddings, things like that. Like they're not going to do the end of the world. But kind of don't fill up on the things that aren't amazing for you before, like, I would hate to see somebody have eaten their potatoes and Yorkshire pudding, yet left their gorgeous roast beef, um, or not nut roast, whatever you're having tomorrow, um, and their vegetables sort of sat there. So kind of tell yourself... Um, if I went out for like dinner for a meal, I would make sure if I had something with like chips, then I would save my chips at the end. I would eat my steak first, say, or my chicken. And then if there was space at the end, then I might have a couple of those chips. But what I don't want to do is leave a 20 pound steak and eat a load of chips. So that's your meal for your dinner, your dinner rule. Listen, it's not working, look. It's not working. It's not working. Can you draw everybody a picture on here? Um, Thirdly, go and see Gruffalo's child's on, please. Um, thirdly, enjoy your treats. Like, if you're going to have a big, gorgeous pudding, yeah, you tell them, enjoy your treats. If you're going to have a gorgeous pudding, like, enjoy it. Don't then sit there afterwards and think, oh, God. Or if you've been good with your breakfast and your lunch and you haven't had those things. Mama, it's on the gas. 
Oh, good for those childs on, Molly. Go and see, quick, go and see with Harry. Go and have a look. Go and see with Harry. Okay. Um, so if you are having like some trifle or something yummy afterwards, like enjoy it. That is the whole point of treats. It's when you overindulge that then you just feel like really low. So make sure you have a good breakfast. You do your dinner meal, you do your dinner rolls of meat and veg first. Then you have pudding and you think, oh my God, this is amazing. I've absolutely deserved this. Make sure throughout the day, number four rule is hydrate. Like, I know it's like a common thing of like, sometimes you're just thirsty. Like sometimes you are. So just get some, some water in with you at every point that you can. First thing in the morning, after breakfast, during lunch, obviously alongside your nice glass of wine as well. Um, but water's like massively important. And also you get like super dehydrated with all the like salty stuff that you're having. If you're having pigs in blankets, you get so dehydrated, don't you? Yeah, can you say hello to everybody? Say hiya. Yeah? Granddad. Yeah, that's granddad on the picture. Um, and then number five, the last one. So it doesn't actually seem that taxing. The last one is plan your next workout. So whether you're doing something Boxing Day morning and you think, do you know what, I'm just gonna get up, do a quick five minute blast. That sounds amazing. Or you're coming to see us on Friday to do Bubble and Squeak, which I have to say, if you haven't booked on to, book on. Like it's the best hour and a half. We've got me, Alex and Liz all running a separate little 20 minute workout each. You finish, you get your bacon roll or your veggie sausage. Um, it's like amazing, it's super social. Like everybody brings their partners or daughters or husbands or um, best friends. It's such a social day and I guarantee you, everybody, even if they've not been working out for a while, everybody gets to the end and like, oh my God, that's literally just made me feel so much better. And of course we've got like New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and stuff to go. So you don't really want to be kind of like having a week of naughty treats, okay? We kind of want to keep a lid on it. So that in January, if, you, if you're already struggling with your weight, what you don't want is on the 1st of January to be like eight pound up. And you can enjoy Christmas and you can actually keep your weight under control. Like you don't have to, don't get me wrong, if you put like two, three pound on, you're probably gonna be good for the first week of January and that's gonna be gone. Okay, you cannot put seven pound of fat on in one week. That is a whole lot of fat. You might be retaining water, you might be all bloated and stuff, and that might be causing the scales to look higher. Don't worry about the scales over Christmas. Just try and keep yourself focused. Make sure that you're hydrating loads. Make sure you're kind of using those rules. Um, protein for breakfast. Try and make sure you're getting the goodness out of your meal before you eat the treats that are on the plate. Try and make sure that you hydrate really well. And try and make sure that you're moving over Christmas. Like get out for a walk with a dog, get out for a walk with family. Do a little five minute workout. Like we've got loads of workouts on our pages. Um, I've got some on my YouTube. Or you could just go on YouTube and just put in like five minute hip workout. Um, there's so much out there for you to do. So this hopefully will give you some ideas for um, Christmas day. I'm gonna wipe my child's nose now with her top. Yeah, good mum skills. Anyway, last thing to tell you. So of all the presents under my tree that are there, that little parcel that I showed you earlier, I know I posted on my Instagram the other day saying, oh, this is like my favorite present I'm gonna get. And a lot of people have messaged and it's quite a lot to write back. But basically um, I won, um, my, my, my best friend starts, my best friend has got a necklace with all of her children's um, handprints or footprints on. Always loved it. Um, she lost it and then they helped her have another one. So they had the print still so they could print her another one. So she was like over the moon. Anyway, she was telling me about it and then she was saying, actually on Facebook, they've got a competition. So, oh, 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 Merry Christmas. Oh, 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 Merry Christmas. Um, so she said to me, they've got a competition one and you should enter. Anyway, I entered, started speaking to this woman saying, oh my God, I'd love something like George's. However, what I don't want to do is copy my friend's necklace. Um, so is there something else I could have? And anyway, so we started talking about the children. I told her that um, unfortunately, 20 years ago this year, um, for those of you who don't know, we lost a little girl called Lily. Um, she was born with no small bowels, so we only had her for um, 29 days. So I speak quite freely about it now because obviously it's a long time ago. Um, but obviously there's, there's, there's times of the year like Christmas and stuff like that, that's obviously um, tugs, tugs at certain parts and just, you know, you can go and do headstones and, and do all that, but there's, well, I don't know. Anyway, I won't get into it, it's not about that. So, um, 
the, I said to the lady, with me having all the children, is there something you could do to add Lily's name onto one of the circles? And she was like, well, do you have like handle footprints? Because sometimes like when you've got a baby that's not well, they will like do the hand and footprints for you. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. So me and Chris, Casey and Lily's dad, also my best friend, um, like was rummaging through her boxes of stuff. Actually couldn't find it, was like really gutted. Kind of was like, oh my God, like I thought I was gonna have this. It's not happening. So anyway, Chris phoned me up the next day at like seven o'clock and he was like, mate, I've been through the shed and I've somehow put it in another box with something else and I found it. So it was like, oh my God. So we went back to this woman, which I actually thought for these handprint or footprint um, necklaces that you actually had to like imprint it into some clay. Um, so I then sent her a picture of Lily's footprint and actually the handprint wasn't as good because she'd smudged it, but her footprint was gorgeous. So I sent it over to her and said, like, is this any good? And she was like, absolutely, like, we can, we can make the necklace with that. So um, I said, do you know what? Don't worry about the other kids, because I've got the other kids here. Um, so she's made me this necklace with Lily's footprint in and put it on, like, a gorgeous chain. Um, and I will post it, obviously, when I open it. But I picked it up from the post office, and it's in that package, and it's under my tree. And if I'm honest, that is, like probably the most excited I've ever been about Christmas Day and obviously the kids make it special and it's amazing and it's gorgeous and stuff but that for me is like a present that cannot be bought it's a present that I know I'm literally going to cherish for the rest of my life and I also kind of wanted to put it on here because I just thought if there's anybody out there who's lost a child who has got their foot or the handprint like you can have this done like I never knew about this and if I'd have known about it I'd have had it done 20 years ago like to the thought of having her footprint on my chest every day it, it just I cannot tell you like you don't have many things like you um yeah so I am like super excited tomorrow that I'll open all my presents kind of just thinking about the one that um I really can't wait to open so if you have um, got a loved one that you would like a memory of on these necklaces I'll tag the lady who's done it for me who is really great um, and obviously there's, there's, you know, other people around, so I'm not telling you to use her entirely, but, um, yeah, so we are really excited. Harry? Harry? Yeah? Quick, come here a minute. What day is it tomorrow? tomorrow. Who's coming tonight? Tomorrow. Father Christmas, and what's he going to bring us? Um, I don't know. What would you, oh, this is Molly, Hummer's face. Do you want to see Hummer's face? So when we have the Hummer's out... Molly just dips her dummy and puts her dummy in her mouth. Do you like our picture wall? So basically, just before I go, this is where Harry's been going to nursery. And I love his pictures so much, I can never pick. So they've all had to go up on the wall. So every time he does a painting, so I feel like we've got this wall now, which was supposed to have two shelves going up on. But actually, and Molly keeps doing this. 